Cities are the heart of the global economy. They account for more than 80% of GDP, and urban populations are rising. By 2030, probably roughly about 60% of the world population is going to live in cities, up from around 40% today. And therefore, with such density and that such congestion, mobility matters. And if you think about our infrastructure today in developing cities, in developed cities, and all over the world, poor mobility has got a cost to it. It accounts typically for about 2 to 4 percent of uh, the GDP of that particular city, depending on where you are in the world. If you're in the developed city, it might be a bit less, but if you're in a developing city like Mexico City or Mumbai, it's going to be much higher in terms of uh, GDP costs. With more people living in cities and with more people actually buying things because of the wealth that they have and also because of the internet, you will have actually significantly more delivery, exploding delivery. That means more traffic on the roads, more commercial kind of mobility that you need to have. Commercial vehicles may not be the biggest population of all vehicles in the cities, but they are actually the ones who are contributing the most to NOx uh, and NOx emissions. They are the ones that con contribute the most actually to congestion because they drive with a different pace and they cause problems. To try and figure out how to solve this problem, we looked at 20 solutions and we found six that we thought were particularly promising. And, and each of those is promising on its own, but actually in combination they become even more interesting because the savings in terms of efficiency, in terms of uh, greenhouse gas emissions and local air pollution and cost all increase. Um, at if, when you start to combine those solutions. The six solutions are autonomous ground vehicles, urban consolidation centers, parcel lockers, night deliveries, um, electric vehicles and uh, load pulling. First of all, the, my favorite, which is actually night deliveries. It's so obvious. We should be able to deliver B2, B2B at night with electric vehicles, silent, smooth when there is nobody in the, in, in the streets and therefore reduce uh, cost, time, and, and actually emissions. One of my top two is the Urban Consolidation Center. Now the Urban Consolidation Center, you have to imagine this is a location where you actually, usually at the outskirt of a city, where trucks come in, deliver things, and you actually reorganize them and then ship them into the city. Today, everybody drives in the city and the issue is usually that they are not fully loaded. The goods are consolidated by their destination uh, so that you can actually reduce the number of trucks entering the city and improve the efficiency of them driving so you don't have five different trucks going to each of five different locations. It's not only affecting cities and it's actually not only that it's coming from one industry because if you think about mobility, you have infrastructure companies that obviously provide, for example, charging stations. You have oil and gas companies at this point right now who have gas stations, but on the other side, are they going to provide electricity going forward? Um, you have utilities who need to provide the, the electricity. You have obviously the car companies that at this point provide the vehicles. And then you have the high-tech companies that sometimes talk about building vehicles, but at least they're talking about at a minimum that they would provide the whole intelligence, electronic, uh, hardware, software, obviously for the autonomous driving. And then you have the companies, the ride-sharing companies like the Ubers and the, the Lyfts and those companies actually who change the business model of car ownership. There's also an integration that is between freight uh, and people uh, and the movement of goods and services and people all around the city. How do you think about the transport of goods uh, married with the way that people are moving around so that you can maybe uh, send goods and people to the same spot? Can you shift the way the number of people on the road to different times and then also the, the, the different timing of the packages being delivered? We are at the beginning of a revolution here. The question is only how to manage the, trans the transition. And I think that's the most important thing because most companies grow up in an industry and therefore know their own industry but have very limited understanding literally on the other market players. And also most of the companies work as standalone companies and partnering with other companies and other institutions and governments and all those different things actually in order to make something happen and something fundamental happen quicker is not something that comes natural to them. 
And I think that's exactly where we believe we can be very helpful, bringing people together on a fact base on a very complex environment. I think the reason why we're excited about what seems like it might be a boring, <laughs> uh, a boring topic, which is commercial deliveries in cities, the reason why it's exciting is because just improving urban delivery has an outsized impact on improving the overall mobility system. The future of urban delivery looks cleaner, cheaper, and faster. Right, cleaner because we'll see that move towards electrification, getting away from the internal combustion engine and reducing a lot of the emissions and the, specifically the, the small causing emissions. Cheaper because a lot of the solutions that we've talked about greatly reduce the cost of delivery. Right? We're talking about uh, autonomous features, delivering in off-peak hours, uh, increasing utilization, all improving the, the cost of delivery right? and faster. A lot of the things we've talked about um, are going to make the whole system work better, work more efficiently, and enable the same-day delivery that customers are beginning to come to expect.